Listen, and the dead will speak. Open your heart, and the door opens to the other side. Throughout our lives, we struggle with the inevitability of death. Many of us fear death and cling to our final breath with misconceptions of what happens when we die and if there is life after death. Some of us fear the place called hell, and others restrict their lives so they will go to the other place called heaven. These videos with special guest Medium J. Marie clarify why we are born, what happens to us when we die, and why we are on Earth. So what are we here on Earth for? We have so many misconceptions of what Earth is really for. We think it's for fame and fortune and just to live and to breed and to just be on a day-to-day -day basis. But really, Earth's the test. It's more about learning how to fundamentally get through it, how to evolve through it, and how to become a better us, a better version of what we came in. When we are born, there is no fear. We actually learn fear as we go along. We are not taught um, when we are born to just fail. We are taught to keep trying, just like keep going, you can walk, you got this, keep going. It's always a motivation. But as we begin to age, it begins to fade. You know, some people believe that there's a heaven and a hell. To me, my concept is earth is hell. Earth is where we learn our trials, our tribulations. We feel pain, we feel fear, we have hurt. It is not to look at these things and become stuck though. It is to look at these things and evolve and to say, I am never going to allow myself to go back through this again. It's about trusting that as you continue growing and as you continue learning that life gets better from here. We get caught up in the physical, plain things, meaning, you know, Know, having people around or having the best of this or working hard for this and every time that we fall and we fail we say why does this keep happening most of us don't take a minute to say well it's because I haven't changed anything you have to look at everything that you go through as a teaching every reaction you have towards somebody or a situation is your karma every reaction that somebody has towards you is theirs we get so caught up in taking on people's guilt people's pain people's judgment um, etc I mean the list can go on instead of saying that's not mine Look at everything that you keep wanting to manifest in your life every time that it falls, every time that it fails, and look at it and say, what can I learn from this? What can I do better? What can I bring into my life that will truly transform this? You know, people say that we have ghosts around. I call them spirits. Only because when we think of the word ghost, a lot of times we think of Hollywood, we think of scary, we, we think of slamming cabinet doors. Now, don't get me wrong. I've had my own paranormal experiences, and they can be loud. But a lot of the times, it's because they're trying to get our attention. They really just want to be noticed. They want to be heard. They want to know, hey, I'm here. Sometimes it doesn't come off as we want, but again, we can't control everything. Going back to our lessons, though, you have all these beautiful people. Every person that you've lost is around you when you're crying, when you're sad, when you're hurt, when you're happy. They are there to enjoy the good times and the bad. What we forget is that they're so close that we can talk to them. We can pull them closer. You know, it's, it's about knowing that if we just call out their name, that they're going to be there in a warm embrace or a small sign. It's about just knowing you're never alone. And I say that and some people are like, whoa, what do you mean we're never alone? <laughs> They're never intrusive in the manner of our personal times, but they're always there, leading a hand, guiding you, even when you don't think that they are. They're to look over you, to love you from afar. You know, heaven is your reality. There's a beautiful movie by Robin Williams called What, May, what Dreams May Come. And the movie, is my favorite. I just, I really have no words for it other than you need to watch it. It gives a great depiction of what your heaven can be like, but again, you create your heaven. One of the most beautiful stories I have is a gentleman came, I'm sorry, his family came and the gentleman came through from spirit side and when he did, he looked at me, he says, let him know I'm on this big boat in the middle of the ocean and I could see him and he had big fishing poles and I was like, oh, he's doing deep sea fishing. And he looked ecstatic, he had a hat on, he just looked like he was in heaven, <laughs> no pun intended. And I looked at his daughter and his wife and I said, he's on a big boat deep sea fishing right now. And they said, that's all he could think about doing once he got sick was to get back out there on that water. So remember, you create your heaven as well, but you have to leave the baggage of today behind. 
We don't want to take it with us. Meaning, start now in clearing up those bad relationships, those emotions that you're still holding on, the things that you're harboring in your heart that are only hardening it. It's about remembering that as you continue going, that you're never alone and that these loved ones and these, and these spirit teams, if you will, are always walking around you. Heaven is for real. It's, again, what you create it to be. If you want your heaven to be beautiful and peaceful and full of flowers, you can. If you want to be on a racetrack, you can. If you want to be vacationing all your wildest dreams, you can. Again, create your reality as you would your heaven because it's only up to you to live in it. Nobody else's.